Blinded by alcohol. That's the news. <laughs> the minor, minor threat comeback single. Blinded yeah, yeah. by the shites. <laughs> <laughs> This is Tony. This is Tom. Happy Tom. From Turbo. And you're listening to Full Metal Monkey. Perfect. <laughs> show today finally back in Stavanger it's been five years since we've seen you here a little update would be awesome Brilliant. came back out of the from back from the dead yeah part of the senior burger the senior wave you know where old people demand to be seen in the public and demand to have a voice yeah and it's kind of like you know kind of like uh, yeah kind of like the Maya Indians have a voice through the Zapatist movement and so Rune is like uh, kind of giving old people back a, a public face and a voice. Paul had a lot of uh, lot of stuff to do because he has a, this job. He's a TV uh, media job producer. He produced a lot of reality shows. Oh. And uh, as he as he says himself, I I make terrible TV about even worse people. <laughs> so he's like, uh, but no, I don't know. He's a big TV producer. Also, aside from reality. And two kids, and they just uh, didn't have time for it. Yeah. So um, he's That's kind of idea. part of the band still in yeah. some weird way. Yeah. So, um, Every time we play, he, if you look hard enough and with special glasses that you can buy from the merch table, you can see him floating above like an aura. You can buy them, they cost 500 kron. <laughs> it's a great hologram. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's like two pack, same technology. <laughs> it's on a budget. Well, you know what happened to two pack's hologram? Yeah, yeah. Biggie's hologram shot it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we never planned a reunion at all. Huh? We thought this is it, this is over. And then um, Turbo Yugen said, well, we have the annual World Yerbo, uh, Turbo Yugen Veltag in Hamburg. Yeah. We want you guys to come down, just play like a karaoke party show, have different people sing different songs. Yeah. It's like totally informal. We started making this list, like who can sing different songs. And we had we had people who knew would might want to do it, like Jello Biafra mm. and even Mike Patton. And then also just like Damon just from Fucked Up. Damon from Fucked Up. And even like just like fans, you know. And then yeah. I thought maybe we should ask Tony because Tony is also a music industry guy. and. You know, yeah. he knows a lot of people and he knows Turbo so well. So yeah, it's like, yeah. okay, he could almost be like the architect who could do different songs. Yeah. And because uh, he's uh, just been a friend of ours for years. Mm. He started Turbo in London and uh, he was our press officer for a long time in London, in England. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're big fans of his old band, The Dukes of Nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I sent him a mail, I was just like, okay, I'll ask Tony. And then Tony said, that's... He just answers that. That's weird. I'm going to be in Oslo in two days. Yeah. And so we had decided to have a lads weekend, like mm. the kind of weekend away in Oslo, the most expensive place on earth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, Tony was, and we sat there making this list, and then, it, uh, and then we just started drinking, and we just had a nice. Because every time I'd go to London, every time Euroboy'd go to London, we always hook up with Tony just to hang out. Cool. So after a few days, it just uh, like this lightning bolt struck me it was like being like Marlon Brando says in Apocalypse Now it's like being shot in the, the forehead horror, the with horror. a diamond <laughs> wow it was like seeing a snail crawl along the edge of a razor blade <laughs> uh, it's just out of nowhere it's like what Tony should sing yeah of course and then we're like I asked him and he said uh, yeah uh. <laughs> so we flew him over just to check it out, you yeah. know. So we rehearsed out at Fornbu, we rehearsed out at Fornbu, the old uh, Oslo airport, and um, we just did, we went into w some song, and after a minute, I just looked at Rune and Knut, Euroboy and Rune Rebellion, and I looked, and they both looked down smiling, and you know, we don't stand around <laughs> smiling when rehearsing, like these Mona Lisa smiles. And I thought, what, what's Mona Lisa? Are they pregnant? You know, there's so many myths about, about Mona Lisa smiling. Mm. 
is, is Runa pregnant again? <laughs> <laughs> but then and Knut said, you know, that's some that's the best he's ever heard the band sound. And Tony, we just jammed some old Turbo songs and did some covers. Cool. Yeah. Just played some Negative Approach. We did the uh, Black Flag Iggy. Careful mm. with that axe, Eugene. <laughs> 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 Comfortably numb, newer and pink flag. <laughs> Frozen yeah. Love, Bucking of Nicks, you know, all the big ones. Pros and cons of hitchhiking. <laughs> oh, worst album cover ever. We t we have a, um, we call it Magic Hour. Before yeah. before we play, we just we just kind of get together and yeah. just make sure that there's no distractions mm. for an hour before we play. Like we don't really talk to anyone outside, no one really comes in. And then that's the time when we just kind of, you know, just kind of put the makeup on and get dressed and just kind of talk things through and you know just be together and I mean mm -hmm. that's all you really need is just think it's good to concentrate like an hour before yeah get yourself together I have vocal exercises I have to do and mm. you know he starts drinking yeah. <laughs> you know everything's Be, uh, aka bass exercise <laughs> yeah bass player exercise <laughs> bass yeah. aerobics yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Scandinavian leather and party animals uh, had its rather pompous moments, so while Retox was more down strips. Now with sexual harassment, that's even more basic. Yeah. Have you reached the level of, level of musical deconstruction you were searching for? Well, I think it's it's like it's so it's kind of almost predictable that we should make a, like back to basics record now. And, huh? But I think I'm really, really, really proud of the you know the whole all the stuff we did in the 2000s with. Uh, uh, Scandinavian Leather, Party mm. Animals, and also Rita. I think Rita Talks is a great album. I think I still convinced that's the reason why he asked me is because when we were drunk, we were talking to everything, and I said, you know, my second favorite turbo album is Rita Talks, and he was like, fuck off, <laughs> no one likes that record. And I was like, I really love it, and then I listed the reasons why, and he was just looking at me like, you're a funny man, like you know, no one ever says they like that record, and I swear that's one of the reasons why you asked me to do it. That's your heart. I, I think I think it's a great. I think man. you know there was so much trouble recording it that took so long. So I think there's, it's not like oozing, really explosive energy, and I think that kind of comes through. But there's some good songs, and everything yeah. is performed really good, and mm -hmm. and all in all, I think it's going to be. But you know what? What we did with those, especially Scandinavian leather and party animals, yeah. we try to see how far you can take punk rock, you know. Mm -hmm. And with the Apocalypse Dudes too. I mean, that was kind of the paradigm, yeah. par paradigmatic shift. Paradigm you know, city. Just paradigm city. Yes. <laughs> very, very good. You know, let's very let's good. put that one on the list. Will that be a new uh, new song? That's gonna be a new song. Paradigm city. <laughs> but you know, we try to take punk rock from you know, see how far you can take it. You know, like turn it into stadium mm -hmm. rock, but still, where there was always the kind of basic core sense of it wouldn't be like when Guns N' Roses would play a Misfit song or mm -hmm. you know a Dead Boy song, but you know just take it and keep that core. Yeah, I don't know, and I think we we um, mission accomplished. I mean, we really we wrote sixteen, seventeen songs for it and mm -hmm. and recorded them. And then listen to it and really just pick the. We really just, we really wanted a record that we had in mind that we were going out of summer and playing it, yeah. and we knew that it was going to have to come out before the summer. So you know it was it was written it was written it was written. It, I don't want to talk for them really, but it was, I think it was a lot more preparation when mm. this record before we went into the studio. So so when we were in the studio, we were able to really just concentrate on it and get it out. It's first or second takes, virtually everything. Wow. <clears throat> if yeah. you listen to it, it's basically, there's no, there's barely any overdubs on it. A lot mm. of the time, uh, Canute, your Euroboy's playing his solo on his guitar track. If yeah. you to, and if you listen to the way it's put together, you've got Runa in one channel, you've got, you know, and you've got Euroboy in the other channel and you've got everything else in the middle. It's a very, very straightforward record. So the hardest thing has been choosing which ones we feel are the ones to play because we honest, honestly feel like of those ten songs, we could have, we could play any of them live, and they yeah. work. Yeah. Whereas I think with other Turbo records before, there's been some songs that were for live, and there were some songs that were trying to achieve something else. You know what I mean? Yeah. They were trying to achieve a, a different effect, like maybe like a radio song, or maybe uh -huh. or maybe like an epic, you know, like almost proggy kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know, whereas this is entirely written for live presentation, cool. call and response. Yeah. You know, getting the audience, in, you know, and and that's and that's the way and that's the way we did it. So really, there was there's some great songs that we did. That didn't make it on the record simply because they didn't fit that um, that criteria. Okay. You know, they're not ones that necessarily be saying. So um, I think some of those will hopefully make reappearances in some shape on future records. Cool. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're pretty we're itching to get back in. 
you know, and 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 work some more on that. But we, you know, at the same time, we want this record to have the life that it deserves as well. You know, War and Wine <laughs> was a great punk rock album <laughs> from the Dukes of Nothing. How was the yeah. transition from playing that kind of music to Turbo been for you, and uh, what are the main differences? Well, that band started when Turbo had broken up the first time, and I mean, my a lot of my performance in that band, and a lot of look, is really Turbo very turbo heavy there was I mean that was one of the bands that we were listening to a lot it maybe didn't um, I mean our main influences in that band were you know Motorhead and Celtic Frost really were like the two kind of things you know so I was saying that the, you know the worst thing about the Dukes was that we were five years too early because we kind of predated um, Doom Riders and Convella Tech mm. and a lot of these bands that mm. do that kind of death and roll yeah. sort yeah. of thing and we and we were really we were really <coughs> doing that um, and also we had the pedigree because it was the guys from Iron Monkey who were now you know were yeah. a legendary band and um, and guys from Orange Goblin as well um, but I think um, I think that uh, it wasn't the transition wasn't that hard I mean the Bat Band broke up in 2004 and since then I've done various other things and played with different people and done uh, and uh, playing around but I suppose that you can sort of discount a lot of that and take the lineage right back to Dukes it's kind of unbroken really I think I think if I'd been in the Dukes and then gone straight to Turbo it would make kind of sense to me I mean my voice is a lot stronger that's one of the funny things I noticed I went back and listened to some Dukes stuff and it's just funny my voice is just good. <laughs> it's the same you know I thought I was quite harsh at the time but it's really not compared to now like it's much stronger now you know because of the steroids in because of those steroids cords. yeah I have injections before I go on cortisone injections every night it's costing a pretty penny okay that's why those hologram sunglasses to see poorly are so expensive that's what they're going towards <laughs> much nicer <laughs> yeah. what's the best thing about playing in Turbo Negro in 2012 it's hard to find a positive aspect <laughs> <laughs> it's just Turbo is such a you know, it's uh, to play in Turbo is like it's like a dream. It's I think death punk, as we call it, is. Uh, I think we kind of subconsciously always try to almost be like play like trance, but in a punk version because it's it's a very euphoric musical form, mm. and to be in the middle of the stage and play it and hear everything, <coughs> it's like it's just an unbeatable feeling, mm. and. After everything just went to pieces in 2009, uh, you know, as always, every time the band breaks up, you're always like relieved, like, oh, <laughs> finally. But, uh, and we were very much so in 2009, but um, you just miss it a lot, you know, and uh, we just, every time Knut and I, I'd meet Knut and then we'd, you know, ruin them, we'd be like, oh, yeah. Don't miss everything about it, but really miss playing live again. You know, mm. recording stuff and all the fun stuff. You know, not all the bullshit. Yeah. And um, now that's what we're doing because all the bullshit is gone. So it's just you know, oh, it's Great. just a, now it's a relief to be back again. We used to write stuff in the studio, and we really spent months in the studio recording these other records. I feel a responsibility to go out and really do my best and to really work on. Um, my presentation, work on my craft, and work on and work on making my voice stronger and performances better because I because I appreciate the fact that there's a, thousands of people there yeah. who want to see this mm -hmm. and who want to do it, and for them it's like you know it's going to make or break their night, you know, yeah. or their week, whether we're good or we're not good, you know. So um, and I like that, you know, it's 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 that's the reason you do it, you know. It's just like. A, it's so few, but probably one percent, less than one percent of the bands in the world ever get the chance to really perform on on this level. Yeah. You know, to go and be able to play anywhere in the world, to go to America, to go to Australia, you know, to travel all around Europe, and to and to and to have and have people waiting there to see you. Yeah. And and believe me, that's not something that I take lightly because it's something I've never had before. Yeah, true you know, story. So, so I so I really really appreciate that. And for me, I'm visiting places I've never been before. I would never have the chance to go to Finland. Mm. Never have the chance to visit all these places or I here. go to or here or yeah. like you know go, you know this is a, this is a, you know great opportunity outside of just you know the fun of playing. It's just like I'm getting out and seeing you know. Cool. <laughs> Let's go.